Hello viewers, this is Manash welcoming you to the series You the Oracle Expert, your one-stop shop to learn and practice Oracle Database Administration and Unix with hands-on experiments using Oracle VirtualBox virtual machines. Build your knowledge base, confidence, and make your way to be an expert Oracle DBA. So far in this series, we learned quite a few things about virtual machines and how to set up a virtual environment in your home network for practicing Oracle and Unix. And in the last tutorial, we learned about how to configure a DNS server in Oracle Enterprise Linux 7. Today's tutorial is a continuation of the part 7 where we will learn how to configure other machines in our network to use this DNS server along with a few basic network troubleshooting scenarios using ping, telnet, and traceroute commands. If you have not watched the previous tutorials in this series, I suggest you watch them first to get a better understanding of the topics covered in this video. So let's start. So far, we have created two virtual machines, one the admin server and the other VM Linux one. And the admin server is the one where we have configured our DNS server so first, let's see if the DNS server is running or not. Service name the status and the DNS server is running. And let's test if it is able to resolve the names using NSLOOKUP. Let's take one of the names that is admin SPR itself. And it is resolving the name. We can see the correct IP address is shown here and also let's resolve the other one vm linux 1 and that is also getting resolved correctly so our dns server is working fine from the server itself now we'll configure the other virtual machine that is vm linux 1 to use this dns server we have two ways to do that one is to modify the network scripts by going to the location at C sysconfig network scripts and there's a file that represents the network interface of this machine that is ifcfz enp0s3 in your machine there may be a different name but usually it is like this so we'll modify this file by putting one DNS entry here. So there is already one DNS entry that is pointing to our gateway, that is our router. And we will put another DNS here, DNS2, and we will modify the first one as our primary DNS server, that is the IP address of this admin server and the second dns server will be the the gateway itself or the router in our home network 192 168 1 1 now if you make changes in this network script then you have to restart the network services for the changes to take effect and there is another way to make these changes to do that we have to access this virtual machine in graphical user interface so let's discard the change here it was just for demonstration purpose and we will go to the GUI of the virtual machine we we'll log in as root to make these changes and you can do the change that is to set the DNS server for this machine right click on this network icon go to the wired connected it may be different for your machine if you are using Wi-Fi then it will be wireless in my virtual machine I am using a wired connection because the host machine has a wired connection so the virtual machines are also showing the same now click on that and select the wired settings then go to this gear icon click it go to the IPv4 and here we have the option to specify the DNS server and 
what we will do here we'll specify our primary dns that is the first dns ip address as our admin server's ip address and the second one as our router or the gateway in our home network so this is the dns1 this is the dns2 now you apply these changes then close it go to a terminal window and restart the network services so service network restart and it's done and how to verify these changes we'll minimize this we'll go to our command prompt again and we will just cat this file that initially we tried to modify and we can see that there are two dns's available dns1 is our admin svr's ip address and dns2 is the router so these changes are permanent now as we set the dns server for this virtual machine that is vm linux 1 now we will test a name resolution if it is working first clear it then we'll do the same ns lookup for the admin svr and it's kind of hung not returning any results let's break it let's try the other one that is the vm linux one that is the server itself vm linux one and this is also hung so the ns lookup is not working means it is not able to get the dns servers service to resolve the names now we will troubleshoot this issue and find out the root cause why the ns lookup or the name resolution is not working first we will use the ping command and we'll see if we are able to reach out to this admin server so from vm linux one we will simply ping the ip address 192.168.1.67 that is the ip address of this admin spr now so the ping command is working means it is able to reach out to the server will break it as the ping command output is showing us there is no packet loss as we are able to reach out to the admin server from this vm linux one we can say that there is no blocking of the ip address or any other network filters that is stopping us from reaching out to this server as our ping test was successful from vm linux one to the admin svr we can say that there is no issues in reaching out to the server the problem is only with accessing the services that is the dns service or name the service or name resolution service now to go a little deeper into the issue we will use the telnet command so in your machine the telnet may not be installed already in that case all you need to do is to use the yum command to install the telnet utility yum install telnet it will take only a few seconds to install the telnet make sure that your virtual machine is connected to the internet as in my machine telnet is already installed so it has not installed it again now we will use the telnet command to reach out to the admin servers dns service and we know that the dns server is running at port 53 we will use the port 53 in our telnet command so telnet the ip address of our dns server that is 192.168.1.67 and the port is 53 we will simply use 53 here press enter and it says trying to reach out to this server telnet connect to address this no route to this host so it is not able to route to this particular host using the port 53 
So the next command that we'll be using for troubleshooting is to find out where in the route there is an issue, if any. And that command is trace route. So trace route 192.168.167 minus p that is for the port 53 and it has given us some details here the most important part is this exclamation x and this usually means that some administrative settings things like a firewall is preventing us from getting the required services from this server 192.168.167 so what is the resolution for this? First we will see if security enhanced Linux or SC Linux is enforced here and we will disable as we don't need that in our home network. We will use the get enforce command to see if the SC Linux is enabled in the admin server. So clear it first and we will see using get enforce command and we can see the output is saying it is enforcing so first we have to disable the SC Linux in this server as well as the other one so let's check the output of this command and in the VM Linux one also it is enforcing means SC Linux is enabled so we'll disable this in both the servers and we have to reboot for the changes to take effect. To disable the SC Linux, we have to modify this file at C SE Linux config. And here we see that it is enforcing, and instead of enforcing, we have to make it disabled and save it. Similarly, we'll do the same thing here at C, SC Linux config and we'll disable it and reboot both the servers. Shut down minus R0. Now I logged into the servers after they are rebooted. And we'll check the SE Linux status again using the get enforce command. Get enforce. It is disabled. Let's check it in the other server. Disabled. Now from this server, again, we'll try to see if we are able to get the name resolution service or the DNS service. So NS lookup admin SVR and it is still not able to get the answer but it's little different than before let's try the other server that is the VM Linux 1 and the same problem we'll break it using control C so even after disabling the SC Linux we are not able to get the name resolution or DNS servers services from this machine that is the VM Linux one so the next thing we will have to do is to see if there is any firewall enabled which is preventing us from getting this required service first let's go to the admin server and check the status of the firewall service firewall B status and we can see that the firewall the service is running and enabled Let's see the same in the other server. And here also we can see that the firewall service is enabled. So next thing we have to do is to disable this firewall and see if that works. First, we'll disable the firewall in the admin SVR or the admin server. To do that, we will simply stop the firewall the service. service firewall the stop service completed let's check the status again and it is disabled now we will try the NS lookup command again 
and this is working now. Let's try the other server that is VM Linux 1 which is the name of this server itself. And this one is also working and resolving to the correct IP address. So this firewall was the issue which was causing this failure. As we do not need firewall service in our home network in between our virtual machines, we will permanently disable this firewall in all our virtual machines. Right now we simply stopped it but in the next reboot this firewall service will automatically come up and cause the issue again. So to permanently disable it we have to use the command systemctl disable firewall d. And we will do the same thing in the other server also service firewall d stop and system ctl disable firewall d now we are all set for accessing the dns servers services from any virtual machines in our home network so this is how we can use ping telnet or trace route commands for basic troubleshooting with network issues. So viewers, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. Please hit the like button if you liked it and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss an episode in this series for the Oracle DBS or similar educational videos that I am uploading every week.